Gothenburg. Uh, my name is Paul Pays and I am the police chief here in Denver. Uh, first and foremost, uh, most important information that we can share right now is that all of the kids at the Northfield campus, the Paul Sandoval Northfield campus are safe. We need to make sure that parents, that families, that loved ones know that the kids at the Paul Sandoval North, Northfield campus are safe. Now, what happened uh, here today? Uh, we want to commend a, a student who uh, saw something suspicious, saw something that looked like a potential threat, and advised the campus security team here at Northfield. Immediately, that campus uh, security officer notified Denver police, and uh, at, in three minutes, uh, police uh, responded with additional jurisdictions. We had the Denver Sheriff's Department, we had uh, the DPS uh, safety team, and did a systematic uh, approach to ensure the safety of the kids and the staff here at Northfield. Uh, shortly thereafter, two individuals were taken into custody. Uh, charges will be presented to the Denver District uh, Attorney, potential charges uh, on this particular case. But uh, the most important thing to know is that uh, the kids, the staff, the folks that work here at Northfield are safe. It's my pleasure to introduce the superintendent for Denver Public Schools, Dr. Alex Moreto. Thank you, Chief. Thank you, Chief. Uh, thank you, Chief, and uh, the entire team. Uh, I would like to stress on a couple of uh, points, uh, intergovernmental relationships and how uh, important they are, and also response time. I also want to give some kudos to Chief Pazin, our internal uh, chief who uh, was uh, the commander until DPD arrived and made sure they secured uh, the campus and the perimeter. Um, as Chief mentioned, uh, we had uh, a foolish act, I'm going to say. Um, not going to say that it was a copycat. Not going to say that it was anything other than what we responded to, which was a serious act. Uh, we had close to 2,000 students on this campus. It's one of our more complex campuses. It puts some community colleges and even colleges to, uh, to shame in terms of how complex and beautiful it is. And we were able to secure and also communicate in uh, a very effective way. First communication went uh, via the school administration. I was there when she communicated to all students and staff via public announcement in terms of the instruction and what was happening. Then uh, myself, Chief Pazin, Chief Eaton, um, went over to the Northeast Terminal. We communicated to those parents who were on site, informing them of what was happening and also that the students were arriving. I was able to see a good majority of the students as they exited each one of these buildings. Um, and the majority of them are in great spirits. Uh, uh, kudos to our team and our response time. And of course, now we're here to answer any questions that you have. But I can't thank uh, our internal team enough, our administration, our response time, that student who said something. Uh, that was then validated by our surveillance. Our response time, one touch of a button, we were able to secure this campus, and it has six buildings. Um, and uh, in three minutes, our partners from DPD arrived. So uh, incredible uh, response time. I'm happy that it was not a real situation, uh, but if there was a, a drill, it, this was the drill to have, because uh, we were able to not only secure, but also not put anybody's uh, safety in jeopardy. Thank you. My name is Mike Eaton. I'm the Chief of the Department of Safety for Denver Public Schools. I oversee all security and emergency management for the district, and I just want to applaud the students and the staff, uh, as well as our law enforcement partners, our team within the Department of Safety for their quick response. This is why we do drills. This is why we prepare our school communities in our emergency plans, and we partner with our police department to provide this type of response when we have a critical incident occur on our, on our campuses. So kids are safe, we're happy about that. We are gonna ensure that all mental health supports are provided to kids. We are re reunifying them with their parents right now at an offsite location, and we will continue to provide support through our crisis management team to anyone that has been involved in this incident. Um, and so I just wanna thank all those that have had patience today, as well as have acted very calmly in this you know, um, critical situation. Questions? Or, I'm sorry. Here. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. I'm Armando Saldate, the um, Executive Director of Public Safety here in Denver. I want to applaud our first responders and our first responders from not only police department, but from our Denver public schools. Uh, the safety team was first on campus and was 
very essential in getting this campus and the situation under control, our students safe. Um, it is going to be take a little bit of time for this reunification process to take place. Prior to coming here to speak to you all, we all had an opportunity to speak to parents at the reunification site to try to get them uh, updated as best we can. We know that sometimes information is, is coming in fast and it doesn't come out fast enough, but we've been really deliberate about getting that information out to you all. And first, uh, the priority has been around the safety of the students. Um, I'd like to uh, also on behalf of Mayor Hancock, um, uh, thank all the responders and all the folks that have been out here today to make this a safe situation. He has been uh, kept abreast by me and, and Chief Hazen throughout this, this incident and, and we offer, the city offers all, all supports for um, our partners here in the school districts and, and to our, the crisis response teams uh, to make sure that we can all uh, get through this. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. Salazar. Uh, I have a question. I don't know which one of you can answer this, and DPD has tweeted out that it was a paintball gun. Can one of you tell us more about what incident transpired? I know there's a lot you can't tell us, but can you please help answer Karen's questions about what transpired that led to this? Sounds great. Vicente, thank you for uh, the question. And uh, yes, uh, this situation, uh, it appears that it's a, a paintball gun. Uh, that is part of the ongoing investigation. We uh, do have uh, two individuals that uh, we will uh, see if the Denver District Attorney's Office will uh, accept charges uh, on this case. Our school violence detectives were on scene fairly quickly and have been doing uh, interviews uh, on this particular situation. Uh, but uh, again, uh, I'm going to repeat myself uh, intentionally. Uh, all students, all staff, the family that is uh, Northfield is safe and uh, this uh, team uh, Denver Public Schools, Denver Public Schools Safety and Security, uh, the entire uh, Denver Public Safety team is working hard to make sure that it stays that way. Uh, you, you follow, uh, 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 were they two students that were arrested and where did the incident take place? Was it in a hallway outside a classroom? Uh, so uh, what we will confirm is that it took place uh, on the campus. Uh, again, uh, I hope you understand the sensitivities around uh, an ongoing investigation, an ongoing and active investigation, but uh, two individuals were taken into custody and uh, with regards to actions that took place here on the campus. Are they students? Understanding, was there any threats made to other students? Um, again, um, we are, are confident uh, that we have the individuals that uh, were involved in this situation and um, we will be uh, working uh, together with uh, witnesses from uh, the school. Uh, I cannot commend the students and the campus security officer enough for taking action in this situation because this is what you need to do. You need to get there uh, immediately. You can't tell the difference between uh, a paintball gun and a real gun and that is why uh, as Chief Eaton uh, explained, as the superintendent explained, that you need uh, this partnership, this collaboration, these protocols that have been uh, in place, that they've been rehearsed, that they've been practiced so that we can, on a very large campus, nearly 2,000 students be able to manage uh, this large situation in a safe way. What charges are going to be recommended to the DA in this case? Uh, we, we'll, we'll follow up uh, on, on what possible charges uh, there are uh, for this uh, situation, but first and foremost, the students, the staff are safe at Northfield. How, How often does, do a, does a school of this size do uh, active shooter drills? So part of our emergency management plan is that all schools in DPS are required to do a lockdown drill, uh, which covers that portion of our emergency plan twice a year. Those are conducted by the Department of Safety and those are uh, logged and actually um, direct feedback is given to the school at that time so we can identify gaps and ensure that this becomes a regular practice within our schools. So is there like a grading system? Not a grading system, but we have professionals that have been trained and do this work. And we want to work with our school leaders to one, make sure that our schools are prepared. You know, during a critical situation like this, a prepared uh, community is going to act uh, in very, you know, with confidence. A unprepared community is going to act with chaos. Chief, how many guns did you recover the, the paintball gun or guns? Um, Part of the investigation, uh, ongoing investigation, sorry, we're not trying to be coy uh, with any of this. Uh, 
we're going to reiterate the fact that uh, the school is safe, the students are safe, and that uh, DPS uh, is uh, got a plan in place to also help folks with uh, mental health support, and uh, that's very important in these situations. Are, are no guns allowed uh, on, in, on DPS facilities? Paintball guns, BB guns, obviously no. That's are correct. No, guns no fast female guns are allowed on any DPS school property. We don't allow concealed carry on DPS property. The only individuals that can carry firearms are those authorized by my department and the Denver Police Department. So like toy guns, nothing. Nothing. Water guns, nothing. No, and we will confiscate those in the event that we have that. And do you do that on a regular basis? Uh, you know, I mean, we have several situations that come out through it throughout the year, but I don't have that data. Sí, claro. Sí, muchas gracias. Uh, aproximadamente como las 9 uh, y 19 de la mañana, uh, un estudiante le informó uh, a uno del personal que había unas pistolas o un, un rifle y uh, seguramente informó a uh, la seguridad del campus que tenemos y en tres minutos llegaron la policía. Uh, eso, ese, es, ese estudiante y posiblemente un cómplice, tenemos dos estudiantes. Y después de eso, uh, casi dos mil estudiantes uh, uh, lo llevamos para el Northeast Terminal, a donde se pueden reunir con los con, con lo padres. Eh, primeramente comunicamos con los estudiantes, el personal, los padres, y aquí estamos con ustedes. So, en breve, eso fue lo que pasó esta mañana. ¿Es ¿Algún mensaje para los padres que todavía están recogiendo a sus hijos en el centro de Puente? Sí. Ok, un mensaje. Que claro que sí. Que no se preocupen, do, todos los estudiantes están uh, seguros, sanos, uh, casi 2,000, um, y en breve lleguen. Uh, si no llegaron, eh, pronto van a llegar porque uh, fue un proceso, fue edificio, piso a piso por edificio. Uh, hace poco, ya yo, uh, el tercer piso del, del último edificio, ya se uh, salieron y están en ruta vía el autobús. Eh, el día de mañana, las clases no van a recibir de lo más normal. ¿Cuándo va a ser el último día de clases para los estudiantes? Ah, bueno. Sí, sigue uh, el, el programa, el schedule, el, el calendario normal, sí, va a haber clase mañana y, y cada, cada escuela tiene diferente día de, de que termina la escuela, entonces nada ha cambiado. The question was, classes will resume tomorrow, and in terms of a uh, terminal date, we have different terminal dates, we have over 200 schools, so uh, classes will continue as such Otra tomorrow. Pregunta, ¿hoy el protocolo sirvió y no fue nada peligroso? Mm -hmm. ¿Hay el protocolo fue para, fenómeno, si puedo decir. Claro que sí. Yo digo que esto fue uh, una prueba de lo más complicado. Tenemos una escuela que tiene casi uh, más estudiantes de, de, de otra escuela y tenemos seis edificios en un campus. Y lo que, uh, lo que logramos hacer esa mañana me, me, asura, me asegura como superintendente que no, no importa lo que pase en cualquier de la escuela, nosotros vamos a estar seguros. No, la arma no. Fuera un, una arma, creo, no puedo decir. Uh, pero no fue de verdad. Chief, um, Parece que fue una arma de pintura. Uh, Con permiso. Well, we did make communication uh, yesterday that we do have uh, some uh, some heightened security around the perimeters of our schools, in particular our elementary schools in light of what happened in Texas. So that has been communicated already. Um, but what happened today uh, really makes me feel secure as superintendent and the more complex uh, situation that we could have considering the campus, our response time and our success in terms of how we were able to safely secure and communicate uh, makes me feel great. In terms of the remaining days, that varies by school. Uh, but yes, we will continue with uh, some heightened uh, security. Uh, around campuses. And then so thank you. What happened in Uvalde, uh, was there any uh, additional response by law enforcement to today's event? <clears throat> so uh, I, th I think the entire world is aware of what took place in Texas. And uh, we are heartbroken as a community, just like the families and uh, the folks. Uh, in Texas. Uh, so we certainly uh, have, have this heightened sense of awareness. Our teams communicate on a regular basis as they did uh, when this situation unfolded. We actually started working with DPS safety and enhancing the police and presence response 
for the schools here in Denver. That continues. There is uh, uh, a reason why uh, the protocol is in place, and the protocol was followed uh, today, and uh, that's the plan moving forward. So thank you. Chief, I, I assume you, you would prefer that students and people in general sort of overreact at this point to, to things you, that, that they see. You don't mind showing up at things that don't turn out to be what what might have been thought initially? So uh, we want kids to be safe. We want staff to be safe. We want the families to be safe. And uh, we cannot commend uh, the students uh, here enough. We cannot commend the staff uh, here enough. On top of the, the, the campus safety officer who took that step, made the immediate no notifications, the parents, the, or excuse me, the, uh, the teachers, the principals, they went into the protocol mold mode. They kept the students calm. They did the lockdown drills, and uh, this was a very orderly process. When you have a very large campus with at least six buildings here and, more, and, and almost 2,000 students, you need these types of protocols. And you can't do it unless you have uh, that practice, and unless you have uh, teachers, principals, administrators that know what they're doing and uh, ensure that the kids are safe. Chief, really quickly to clarify, the gun that was recovered was a paintball gun. Uh, I, again, um, I, I know what we tweeted, uh, and we're going to stand by uh, that, but we're not going to get into any additional details about uh, the investigation um, here. Um, it's very important to, to know uh, what uh, the possible uh, threat was and to take possible threats uh, serious. Uh, there is, uh, you know, Certainly, uh, it's hard to distinguish between uh, a paintball gun and a uh, assault rifle or a uh, handgun. And uh, in this case, uh, all measures were taken, all safety measures were taken. Uh, so that way, uh, the, the students, the staff, the faculty, and uh, the, the, the North Northfield community was safe. And, and to your point, uh, paintball guns these days, I mean, they resemble any kind of weapon there is out there. Was this like a handgun type? Is it uh, again, no, uh, no additional details on this investigation. This is uh, an ongoing and active uh, investigation. And, uh, you know, as more information, uh, as, as a case is, is presented, uh, we will let you know. Thank you very much. I have a, I have a culminating uh, statement if I can. So uh, I can't thank enough our team um, and our intergovernmental partners and also our neighboring districts. So thank you to Aurora. Thank you to Jeffco, who've also uh, lent us some support. As superintendent, I believe I have a, a duty to make sure that every uh, student has an opportunity to learn. You all who are parents there, the last thing you want to question is whether students are going to be safe and secure. And also, as an educator, I don't believe an educator can educate if they don't feel safe and secure. I definitely know that a student can't learn if they don't feel safe and secure. So we can't take that for granted. So I'm very thankful about the resolution that we've had uh, this morning uh, and throughout the day. Uh, but it's a, a all too common reminder on making sure that we do not bypass, I guess, the foundational security of, uh, of every institution, especially a learning institution. En breve en español. Uh, me siento uh, bastante contento uh, sobre cómo nosotros respondamos como equipo, igual con uh, nuestros socios de departamento de la policía. Uh, pero los estudiantes nunca van a aprender si no están seguros. Igual los profesores nunca van a enseñar como pueden enseñar si no están seguros. Entonces, nu nunca uh, podemos uh, lograr si no estamos seguros. Entonces, vamos a seguir planificando con nuestros socios de la policía. Muchas gracias. Thank you all. Thank, Thank you, very you. Much. Thank you.